I'm Jennifer Wood. I'm a senior consultant with Health Giving, and thank you so much for joining us for our seventh annual Health Philanthropy Summit. We are going to continue to let folks in, but right now I'm just going to get us started with an explanation of today's theme and why we chose what we uh, did for our theme this year. And this year we chose for our theme, the theme of VUCA, which is an acronym, which stands for Volatility, Uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity. Now, VUCA is an older business term that crops up every few years and it actually has its origins in the Cold War. It was created by the War College to describe this new kind of world that was dawning um, right during this period. And this world of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. It's just, it saw not just the end of the Cold War, but as you can see here also, the very first Gulf War. So this was really a tumultuous time in our lives. And so the War College decided to give it a name and that was VUCA. So it came back into the conversation during 9-11 and then during, again, in the market crash of 2008. But then since then, things have been relatively quiet on the VUCA front until a little thing called COVID-19 surfaced and turned our worlds upside down, as we all know, and for an extended period. So we've been upside down and inside out for quite some time now. So we've really never known this sustained volatility uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity really in a generation. And that's why we wanted to create for you today a day of strategy around thriving in this atmosphere. So thriving in VUCA. So from ICUs to Wall Street to Main Street to even, yes, the Hospital Foundation boardroom, we've come to realize that thanks to the COVID pandemic and its many connected and related issues, our organizations, they just don't face problems in the traditional sense of situations that can be planned for and then solved, but we're also facing dilemmas. And these are new and unclear situations that can't be solved with just a clear and easy solution. Now, today we know that the standard every three to five years strategic plan has given way to this new normal where progress is made through deliberate ongoing and active engagement with our clients and their VUCA environment. So in the words of Bill Mountcastle, my colleague, we are really looking to throw out that old planning binder that we used to create for our clients. And we're now creating these planning strategies that are dynamic and agile, because really that's what our VUCA environment is called for. So let's look a little closer here. What does VUCA look like as you fundraise for your organization? Do any of these situations sound familiar? So the V in VUCA stands for volatility, and volatility pertains to the dealing with the speed of change when you are in an evolving situation. And in this evolving situation, the change is happening faster and more often than you've ever experienced before. So for example, due to COVID, as events and your one-on-one -on -one solicitations and your board meetings, all of them were canceled very quickly. And then there was a huge upsurge in communication technology and training needs when everything practically moved online overnight. I mean, we all remember those days. It was about 18 months ago, March, 2020. So now 18 months later, we find ourselves adapting to a hybrid mode, which leads us to our next letter and topic. And that is, uncertainty or the U in VUCA. Now, uncertainty refers to the inability to predict the future with desired confidence. Now, again, this refers to the unpredictable nature of what could happen in the future. We can't get perfect information. We navigate not knowing the whole truth of our newest strategy is actually going to perform, know how it's going to perform because we've never been in a place like this before. We've let, literally, we're doing this all for the first time, folks. For example, we've never held so many virtual fundraising events before or attempted so many hybrid events before now. So therefore, we really truly don't know what the new normal is or the new ROI is or a hybrid, hybrid fundraiser that was virtual in 2020 and then previously was an in-person gala. So we also don't know yet what the ROI is for an individual solicitation on Zoom versus in our local coffee shop because we just don't have enough years of data to identify the trends. Now, years from now, 
we're going to know. We're going to be able to collect the data to show how things went, what went well, and by then we will be able to analyze our behavior and predict trends. But fundamentally, right now, we don't know, and that's okay for now. We're just going to embrace this uncertainty and gather as much data as possible. Now, complexity comes in to shake things up in our VUCA world, so C is for complexity. And because after all, sometimes it's not just uncertain and volatile. At times, you will know all the unknown elements. You can see them on my sign there. You can see them, but it's just too complex to navigate or turn into a very simple strategy or approach. You literally have too many moving parts. Um, and because of all these moving parts or possible outcomes, a simple strategy just can't address them. If you change one thing, you may affect several other carefully planned out campaigns, stakeholder opinions, or even staff levels of productivity. So, for example, if you reorganize by eliminating some service lines that are routinely losing money due to Medicaid reimbursements, you could affect your culture and how you inspire your donors. If you change how you inspire philanthropy, you may affect your direction, your purpose, and again, your culture. It's all interconnected, making it very, very complex. But when you learn to master complexity, you are able to see where and how everything is connected and how critical communication is so that decisions meant to solve problems don't result in creating new ones along with a confusing status quo. So ambiguity, that's our A in VUCA. Ambiguity refers to the lack of clarity interpreting circumstances when there is limited or conflicting information. Masks, vaccinations, travel, and gathering restrictions those are just a few of the ways that ambiguity makes our VUCA world more difficult to navigate, and it often gets in the way of productivity. When something has more than one possible meaning or interpretation, it can cause confusion. Ambiguity also refers to limited information, such as not knowing another person's comfort level about meeting in person, whether it be a coworker or a donor. Now, when you're dealing with one-on-one -on -one dynamics, it's relatively easy to clear up this ambiguity simply by reaching out and having that conversation. But when you are dealing with large groups of people, when you are dealing with segments of donors, it is much harder to predict in this era how they're going to react on a larger scale. And that's what ambiguity is all about. We may be able to see things happening in the environment, but not know what it means for us in the short or long term. We may see the effects, but not fully understand them. Now, when you learn to master ambiguity, you become more agile, gaining the ability to be open to more than one interpretation and gain the ability um, to mobilize resources, build momentum, and measure those results. So what were to happen? If in order to thrive amidst these challenging circumstances, we were to transform these elements, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, we were to transform them into the extraordinary elements of vision, understanding, clarity, and agility. Let's take those in order. So in taking vision to volatility, what we want to do is we want to create a path that clearly defines the organization's purpose and make sure that every team member clearly understands it. So, for example, sharing your org chart and role so that everyone from the foundation board member to the person handling the checks can see who does what and how they play their part in fulfilling the mission. Starting our our summit with V and also with a feasibility case study is Dave Selzer of Phelps Health in Rolla, Missouri. He will be sharing how he brought his team from volatility to vision with an emergency department feasibility study during COVID and how they emerged with a clear vision of what the hospital needed and what the stakeholders truly wanted. Watch for Dave's presentation to follow in just a few minutes. U is next in the VUCA acronym. And in the campaign process, and with that, we will be converting uncertainty to understanding. Understanding is reached when the strategic thinking and leadership create an environment that has every team member pulling in the same direction. By clearly defining the organization and campaign's purpose and making sure that each of your team members understands it, and then hosting conversations and meetings to share these objectives at the leadership and donor level, you will be on that critical path to understanding. 
taking us down that path of understanding when it comes to transformational campaign gifts at 11 a.m. EST today will be Director of Principal Giving, Larissa Trinder of CHKD. She's leading the Lighting the Way campaign for CHKD, the Children's Hospital in Norfolk, Virginia. And while still mad mid campaign, she and her team have raised over 60 million for pediatric mental health. And she will be taking some time to talk to us today about how they've harnessed the tool of understanding to help donors make transformational gifts to pediatric mental health. The noon EST offering in our summit is brought to us by the letter C, where we will be taking complexity to clarity. And there are many ways that we can make this change. And at a high level, it happens when you create and maintain a culture of philanthropy at every level of your organization. Again, from that person who enters the gifts into the system to the president of the foundation board. This VUCA environment is the perfect opportunity to brush up on why every gift and every team member makes a difference in fulfilling your mission. At a ground level, complexity can be converted into clarity through the use of analytics and routines to measure your progress along the way. Showing us how she reached and took a, she took a complex situation and reached clarity in campaign donor recognition will be Lisa Zellers, Vice President of the Altman Foundation in Canton, Ohio, where they completed a multi-million dollar cancer campaign during the pandemic and then found themselves with a rather complex task of honoring their transformationer transformational and major donors while social distancing. Finally, our journey ends at 1 p.m. EST with ambiguity and learning how we can take on more agility in our philanthropic strategies. To explore agility, we'll be hearing from Brad Blandon Esquire, Vice President of Charitable Estate and Gift Planning for the Bon Secours Mercy Health Foundation in Cincinnati, Ohio. Brad will demonstrate how to handle VUCA and turn it into a positive force that transforms you and your team and builds up those agility muscles when speaking to your donors about planned gifts. There he is. So in summary, today's thriving VUCA World Health Philanthropy Summit will be taking us on a campaign journey, a climb if you will, starting with the vision that can rise from volatility during a feasibility study to the understanding of our major donors that we reach where we were once feeling so uncertain. Next, we'll leave complexity behind and find clarity and transformational donor recognition. And finally, at the peak of our summit, we will gain new insight on how to face ambiguity and master the art of agility in the space of planned giving. So that's an overview of this year's Health Philanthropy Summit. We'd like to thank you so much for joining us and a special thanks to Ohio AHP who made it possible to offer four CFRE credits. We will be reaching out to you after the summit to ensure that you have the forms to get you those continuing education credits. We thank you so much for your attention and we're so excited to go right now to Dave Selzer and his presentation on feasibility studies. And we thank you so much for joining us.